All right, everybody, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. Today we're gonna go around the potted figs, also the in-ground figs. We're gonna do a little bit of a harvest. Uh, we finally have some figs that are ripe. Today is August 12th, and uh, we're getting into the fig season. Um, we're getting a certain quantity of figs now that I feel like it's um, a good idea to bring you guys along while you're attached to my chest and just show you some of the figs I'm harvesting. What we have over here is a number of Hatib de Argentile figs. These are just some of the best figs I grow. This is definitely one of the best varieties. Um, it's not really found commonly in Europe. Um, even though this is definitely a variety from Europe. Pick all three of them. They look pretty good. Let's see what the inside looks like. Um, that tree, by the way, you know, let me just talk about the tree really quickly. I honestly should do a separate video just on this variety because it is just so special. But first off, it's insanely productive this year. Uh, this is a grafted tree that I grafted uh, last year onto raspberry latte. I planted my mother tree, which was also a grafted tree. Um, I planted that one in the ground and it died because of that. Someone had reached out to me um, recently, someone in Philly, they had a Celeste tree. Look how productive this, this thing is, by the way. And it grows so well because it's on this rootstock, it just is insane. It's in a 15 gallon size pot. Nice raspberry latte rootstock. I got a air layer on this branch. Three of the grafts took down here. Um, all three of them took last year. And I just decided, this was actually for my own cuttings. Even though my mother tree died after planting it in the ground, which was again, a grafted tree, big mistake. Um, I took cuttings before uh, I planted it, or I guess after I planted it, that fall. And the cuttings survived all spring until, or all winter until the spring. And then I grafted it onto that raspberry latte and it just took off this year. Um, even last year it really took off from graft. Um, I, got, I think I got some fruits last year if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm not sure how great they were, but this year they're... They're looking fantastic. Uh, this did, I think, receive a head start. Yeah, it did. So this was in the greenhouse. Typically, this is a mid-season variety, though. It doesn't really require a head start. Um, certainly helps. We also have over here Smith. Uh, as these just continually ripen, it's such an incredible fig. It just is. It's just nuts. Uh, this is a really good comparison I wanted to make between these two varieties because these are as almost as good as it gets here, Smith and Hatib de Argentile, and I want to see if I prefer one over the other. Um, it, it was really difficult prior years to actually say which one I prefer. Uh, you can see that this Hatib de Argentile, as we open these up, maybe we'll see something interesting here. Yeah, let me just put them down over here in this plastic. Yeah. I'm gonna sit down. I've been having really bad cramping in my uh, my left leg. Let's open this up. That looks pretty good. I had one of these yesterday, I think, or the other day. And um, it just wasn't ready yet. This one definitely looks ready. Wow. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's so good. It's like very similar to Smith. They're on a similar level, that's for sure. This Smith here is not really as right. Not the fairest comparison. But that's still very good. That's the beauty of Smith. It doesn't really need to be all that ripe to taste great. 
Let's try this one. Again, this looks really good too. So they have a similar thick texture to them. That's very cakey. Um, these Hatib de Argentile figs in the past have had a nice cherry flavor to them. Some acidity, but I'm not picking that up. Very, very good. In terms of the skin, I don't think there's much difference. I think these both do extremely well with their skin. Uh, similar to Celeste and how it's hydrophobic. Uh, it doesn't really absorb the, the water into their skin very easily. And they almost never split. It's the Argentile has a weird uh, shape this year. Honestly, I'm not sure which one I prefer. They're like neck and neck. They even taste quite similar. Maybe Smith has a slight edge. I think Smith has a slight edge in texture, whereas a Tide Argentile may have a slight edge in flavor, but I think I need more time, to be honest with you, to compare the two. To really come up with one that I like better, but many of the you know, things about the figs actually, believe it or not, are just so damn similar. Like they ripen mid-season, they reliably ripen, they do so well in the moisture. I think Smith has a slightly shorter hang time to it. Um, but it's eat the Argentile, it's just a lot less finicky. It sets easier doesn't require a lot of light to set the fruit buds so for more you know it depends on i guess where you're at uh maybe you're in a poorer fig climate it's eat the argentile probably the better choice less light i should say i don't know they're so similar it's crazy um all right what else we got here we do have some dotado My grandfather ate one of these yesterday. Um, he loves this variety. He is just obsessed with these white figs that have lots of honey, very juicy. This is his kind of fig. For me, it's not. See, to me, this tastes watered down. And... Um, not as intense. Even not as sweet as these others. I mean. Ugh. I think there was some mold at the eye just there at, on that one. Yeah, I mean. I'm just not a big fan of this. And I, I can get it. I understand why somebody would prefer something like this but for me i'm just it's just not where i'm at i and i he was like telling me he's like he's like ross that's your best fig <laughs> like like what are you crazy um that's just what he is you know i was like well he's like yeah you should charge more for that fig i was like what do you mean i should charge more everyone's got it he's i was like Telling him about supply and demand. I was like, everyone has it. It's the most common variety. You can get it anywhere. And in, my, in most people's opinion, it's just really not that great. The demand is low. And the supply is high. So the price is going to be, you know, price is going to be low. He's a businessman. Um, he used to have many different barbershops throughout Philly. And uh, he's tried everything. I mean, the guy really is the American dream entrepreneur and that's kind of where I get it from and my family gets it from um, here we have a little Ruby this is oh this one's gonna be great 
this one here is drying up on the tree lots of ants i think what i'm going to do this year is really get the tangle foot out because these ants especially when it rains they ruin this they ruin these figs and i don't want to be eating ants i mean a lot of us eat ants probably eat a lot more ants than you think but lately i've been eating a lot of ants and tasting the ants and they're not they don't add really a great flavor to the to the figs problem is this variety has such an open eye and it's get in right away but it's very very good um when they dry on the tree like that they're nice and thick and jammy um almost on the level of these which are very cakey these are like cake like a cold adam these are just like a very thick jam You could tell there's a little bit of different texture there. I like them both. I like both textures, but if I had to choose, I think I prefer the cakiness most times rather than just the sticky, sticky jam. These have such a short hang time. I, I'm really, uh, you know, if you look at this fig when it when it rains, it's not going to be great. There's gonna be mold at the eye. The figs, they do tend to droop down eventually. You can see here, like, here's one, but this will eventually droop down. Same thing over here, like you can see right here, this fig is now drooping down. The eye is no longer pointed upwards, which is critical. But if you catch, if the rain catches these figs at the wrong time, it'll ruin them. But it has to really get them at the wrong time and in a high quantity high quantity of rain see i'm picking about five of these today that are really well ripened and uh these really have a very short hang time as i mentioned especially right now it's you know it's really um it's still a bit warm out here today's a nice day though today has got a nice breeze I'm wearing jeans out here and i'm really not sweating um it's a drier day. There's one in here too. Wow, that's a really small fig. Get these weeds out of here. So many weeds. That's not good. I gotta get more on top of this. It's so hard to stay on top of all the weeds, as you guys probably know. Wait, where did that fig go? Oh, here it is. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this little thing. Look at that. <laughs> what what kind of fig is that? It's on this branch here. It was on that branch. Weird. Let's eat the small one. Tastes just as good. But that was like smallest fig I've ever seen by far. Not even close. <laughs> crazy there's too many ants in these when there's too many ants they, they actually have a bad flavor but very very good just sweet nice figgy figs with a dense sticky jammy texture to them yeah really hard to beat People ask me, like, hey Ross, what do you do with all your figs? Well, I'm eating them. What do you what do you mean? Plus, I got all these family members. Random people. Um that just want these things. Uh my friend Chris is gonna be coming over here at some point. In September, we'll do like a tasting with him. Maybe I'll even get him on video. I'm not sure. Very lovable guy. Um, here's some Ron de Bordeaux air layers that are taken, but no figs at the current moment. I think, I really do. I think Little Ruby has a huge advantage over this Ron de Bordeaux, but. 
I don't want to say that just yet because we could be totally incorrect. Um, this little ruby had a, it's definitely an advantage in the spring, having much more of a structure that was established there with more apical buds, more lateral buds. Whereas this Ronde Bordeaux wasn't working from nearly as much as that little ruby. So there's a there's an excuse that can be made with this Ronde Bordeaux for sure. Uh, do I have any other fruit? I know I have a, a Floria fig in the front front of the house. I want to do a separate video on that. Um, so I'm not going to eat it on this video, but I want to eat that soon. Talk about that variety because we've never covered it on the channel. And it's quite good. Um, drier conditions. And it's also um, super, super early. I wonder if any of these long to dute figs are getting close. Because these ripened to Braba not too long ago. The Moro de Caneva is still a bit behind. I would imagine some of these trees now, middle of August, maybe around uh, August 21st, we'll start to see a lot of these. Like the Azores Dark we're just looking at here. The trees that survived the winter. This um, stallion looks like it's dropping its figs again, as many of these Celeste figs do. I don't know why that is. I thought it was the light. So what I did was I opened this up and it just, I think I came in here too late. Got to remove some of these leaves to get the figs the light that they need. It's a shame because this thing was really going to produce a lot of fruit. It's just dropping all of it. Um, what else have we got? Down here is a conde. Yeah, it's still a bit away down there. So we got some time for some of these, but that's really why I love that little ruby. I mean, it could be that Ronde Bordeaux will do the same thing. I'm sure other varieties will do the same thing, but for right now, this little ruby is so far ahead of every other tree because it's survived the winter now for multiple years. So it's very hardy and uh, the figs are very abundant as you just saw. Uh, but they, truthfully, they, they have such a short hang time. It's hard for anything bad to happen to them. But at the same time, it's also very easy for something bad to happen. So it's just like, it's a weird thing. Um, I think that's all we got. We still have more fruit on the little ruby that's ripening now. So if it were to rain, like let's say today, a number of the figs on here would get destroyed or could get destroyed. Yeah, it's just like every fig has got little different pluses and minuses to it. And it's hard to just say, you know, one is better than the other, but you can definitely make an argument that there are certain varieties here that have grown in the past We've grown for a number of years that are just far superior to any of the others um, but it's hard to quantify all of that put all those little characteristics together and give it a value and then say all right this is the number one fig um, or this is the number 20th fig you know um, so like little ruby as an example it's just it's got all the great characteristics other than that open eye and the fact that the shape is wrong and the way that it hangs is wrong. So if you catch it on the wrong day, you could be, you know, looking like a fool as an example. But the, but the positives are any other time where you don't catch it at that wrong time, it's one of the best, you know? Um, so it's like, <laughs> it's weird. I don't know, you know, it's hard to exactly, uh, give these things a value as I just said so well that's it guys thanks for watching I think we'll do more of these videos obviously I, as I wanted to really take you guys into the trees and show you inside the trees rather than just like having a camera away you know over here and then me I'm over there somewhere 
uh, picking the figs and whatnot. This is like a really up close and personal view. Um, so that's what we'll do as the time goes on. And I think today, oh, that way we can really talk about which are the better figs that we had. I think there was a Hatib de Argentil that I ate, one of them, that was probably the best, but it was so close with that Smith. And the Little Ruby, honestly, is not that far behind. It's just a matter of ripeness. If I got the Smith more ripe and I got the Hatib de Argentils more ripe, it's far and away superior to the Little Ruby, but the fact that Little Ruby, you know, it just uh, is so ripe because of that short hang time and those drying capabilities that it has. It's really good. So, anyway guys, thanks for watching this one. We'll see you soon, alright? Take care.